Hi, Derek O'Brien with DOB Sound here. Uh, we're here today with Daniel Villegas from Harmony Sound, and we're here to talk about the Allen & Heath SQ6 and the Allen & Heath SQ5. Uh, before we get started on the SQ6, we'll talk about some of the differences with the SQ5 and some of the uses that, uh, that might be helpful to decide which you would go with. Yeah, so some of the main differences between the SQ6 and the SQ5 really is its small profile. The SQ5 has 16 faders as opposed to the 24 faders that the SQ6 has. Uh, the SQ6 also has the soft rotary dials, and it has 16 soft keys instead of 8 soft keys that are found on the SQ5. Um, really what it comes down to is engineer preference, whether or not you want the large fader count or the small fader count. Also, it depends on the amount of space you have, where you're going to be um, putting your console down. You know, if, if a house of worship has a small, you know, little area for a mixer, the SQ5 is rack mountable and could probably fit most spaces as opposed to the SQ6. Hmm. Okay. But the same uh, channel count, ultimately? Ultimately, both consoles do have the same channel count. Both consoles can be expanded to 48 channels at 96K. Both consoles also have I.O. ports, so you can bring in either a Dante card or a Waves card that allows for external recording um, as well as plugins to come in. Both consoles also have uh, Allen & Heath's newest uh, processing technology, the FPGH Core, um, which allows for deep processing in every channel with a... Uh, surprisingly low 0.7 millisecond uh, of latency. Nice. Yeah. So they're both very powerful consoles uh, for their price. They have the very familiar um, Q-series layout um, with technology from their more advanced consoles, the D-Live and the GLD. Um, you'll see later on that there's um, drag-and-drop features on here and there's um, you know, the ability to bring, to bring outside plugins in, other compressors, other pre's, and that kind of stuff. Via the Waves card, for Via instance. Via the Waves card, and also some updates from Allen & Heath. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll get into uh, some of the minutia on the, uh, the SQ6. Sounds good. So like we said before, if you're familiar with Allen Heath consoles, um, it has the look of the Q-series console with a few upgrades from their other D-Live consoles. So as we go into each channel processing, you'll see that we have um, these rotary dials with LEDs that turn on once they are in play. Once, once you go into a menu where they are being used, those LED indicate that these rotary dials are in play. As you can see, we have a rotary dial that's off. And the rotary dials that are actually on that we can utilize. In each channel screen, when you process, you can see a breakdown of each individual parameter from preamp to EQ, gate, and compressor on the left of this 7-inch touchscreen. Now, we have the ability to name our channel, control the preamp of the channel, control the gate, the compressor, the pan, and the high pass filter from these rotary dials that have been activated. So let's start by simply going into our kick, which is in channel one. And if you select the top of the channel, you'll see that you have the ability to name the channel. So here you can see I've chosen kick in, and from this screen, I can also choose the color of the channel. Um, and I do that simply by pressing that color button. And I can choose from a wide range of colors. I've already chosen this one to be green. I've already applied it. So I'm going to close it up and you'll see that it's green just like all of my drums. Um, next, we're going to go into the uh, gate. Now you can see that the rotary dial associated with the gate automatically is um, in play once I start editing the parameters of that. I can go ahead and insert it by pressing in. The same could be said for the high pass filter. 
We're then going to go into the EQ section, and you'll see that our rotary dials on the left, on the right, um, are activated. And you can see that I am changing the parameters of this. Okay. Next, we're going to insert our compressor, and we're going to choose the compressor on the bottom. You'll see that our compressor comes up. Uh, we have this parallel path here at the bottom, which allows us to really um, be harsh with compression and choose if, how dry or wet we want it to be. We also have our pan feature, which is seen at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Next, we're going to go into our processing on our outputs. As you can see, I've already kind of assigned that we'd have eight mix auxes. We'd also have our mains, our aux fed sub, and two matrixes. So to go into the processing screen for our outputs, you simply select the output section of the console on the right. And you select whether you want to talk to the left and right or your mix 1 through 12. So we're going to start with left and right. And you'll see that the rotary dials associated with the parameters that you can affect on that particular send are illuminated as opposed to the ones that are not. Those are no longer in use. So we have a graphic EQ on the output. We also have a parametric EQ and we have a compressor limiter. We're first going to go into the graphic EQ, and you can affect every single parameter individually by dragging and dropping, or you'll see that if I highlight the fader, the knob associated with that fader turns on, um, and you can affect every individual frequency. You also have the fader flip button that if you press makes all of the faders uh, correspond to a frequency. The, the LED screen then shows those frequencies that are associated with the fader and you can see that you can use the faders to quickly adjust your output send. Notice that we only go to 6.3K so you press it one more time and you get the rest of your channels on the last fader bank. We're then going to go into our graphic EQ. You can see that our rotary dials associated with that graphic are still in play. Same with the compressor. You can change the parameters there. So all of this makes this a very fast console. What makes it even faster is as we continue on to our output mixes, now I'm on AUGS1. You can also change the name of your, of your AUGS sends simply the same way as your main channels and you click on the top of them. You can also change the color of those as well. As we go into our mix sends, you'll see that there is a copy and paste function, function which makes this console extremely fast. You can see I've already done some EQ there. Now, let's say we're in a time crunch and I just I found that this is basic EQ gets us pretty close to where we want to be. I simply press copy. I select the channel I want to copy. Select the channel I want to paste into and I paste into that channel. So now my AUG Send 2 has the same EQ as my AUG Send 1. So now that we've talked about processing, we're going to go into the I.O. of the console. So you get to the screen by pressing the I.O. button under the, the touch screen. You'll see that we have our output patch. Now on the top of the, of the page, we have our local outputs, our S-Link outputs, our Mi outputs, USB outputs, and our IO port outputs. 
So if you need to route things to those outputs, you simply select whatever it is that you're going to be sending to. Um, currently, we don't have anything like that set up, so we're just talking to the local outputs. On the left of the screen, we have our channel inputs, and we have our external mix inputs. We also have our outputs, direct outputs, mix outputs, and rack effects. The way you select where you want to output is by clicking on a box that is associated with both the local and whatever it is that you're looking to patch. Next we're going to talk about the utility page. Uh, you can get to this page by pressing the utility button on the bottom right of the screen. Here we have a diagnostics page, calibration page, MIDI page, and upgrades page. In the diagnostics, you can see which firmware we are on. If you notice some of your faders are not working properly, you can recalibrate them. If you have a MIDI device um, connected to the console, you can program and talk to your MIDI device through the MIDI page. Um, and Alan Heath has added this upgrades page which, let, which lets you see what is available. As you can see here, there is a tube pre that can be inserted into every channel that uh, upon upgrade can be brought into the console. On the left of the screen we have our general page which is what we just described. Then we have our USB data page, USB utility, SQ drive, and auto mic mixer. So USB data and USB utility lets you format the USB that's going to be used with the Allen, Allen and Heath console as well as grab data. So you can see that once you plug in a USB drive, it then reads it. I've already formatted it, but if you have a blank USB drive or a used USB drive, you're going to have to erase all the data and format it to the console itself. The SQ drive allows for stereo recordings or multi-track recordings at 96K from the console. So if a client ever just springs uh, recording the show on you, you can very quickly just record straight to a USB drive using the SQ drive. We also have our automatic mic mixer page. Um, here you can assign your inputs. You can see all of your inputs and you can set them up as well. All right. Next, we're going to talk about our setup page on the console. It's the third button from the right under the touch screen. You can see on the left of the screen, we have different parameters. We have audio uh, setup, surface, we have mixer configuration, and we also have network setup. If we go back to audio, we then have our subscreens. One of them is PAFL settings. We have our talkback settings our signal gen settings, and our audio sync button. You can see that we're internally clocked at 96K. You can send talkback and signal generator simply by clicking on the mix outputs. Both work the same. We then have our surface um, screen. And in our surface screen, you can see that the drag and drop function of this touch screen is active here. Okay. Looking at the surface of the console, you can see that we have six different la uh, layers labeled A through F. So these layers correspond to the 24 faders on the console. So we have a total of 40, 144 active faders um, on this SQ6. 
we can talk to and program every single one of those 144 faders here in the surface configuration page. You can see that the letters A through F correspond to our layers A through F on the console. I have previously gone in and made the layer A 24 inputs and layer B my outputs. So you can see that through my layers here. So if I click on A, this bottom layer completely refers to what I have dragged into this particular set of faders. And I've done so because I chose this IP or inputs, but I can also drop in whatever I want by selecting this mix effects, or DCN MIDI control. I've customized layer A to be my inputs, so I've got 24 inputs representing a 24 input show. My layer B shows all of my outputs, and I've customized that by dragging and dropping aug sends, sub sends, left and right, house sends, matrix sends, and you can see that both this window and my current faders correspond to that. This makes programming really fast and very powerful because you can make any fader whatever you want, wherever you want it. Next, we have 16 soft keys, which you can program to be whatever you want from the options given to you. You can see that I've chosen to have my soft key 8 be my global tap tempo. Here we also have the options of programming our soft rotaries, which are found on the SQ6. You can see that I've associated each rotary with a different DCA group. I can control the send of that DCA programmed on my um, soft rotaries and you can see that they work directly with the channel strip. Then we have our surface preferences. So that means, you know, the brightness of the LEDs, the balance of the light bars and the channel strips, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can make this console dim or you can make it really bright. We then have our mix configuration screen. Here you can choose to make uh, certain channels stereo channels. You can choose to make certain mixes stereo, which is ideal for anybody mixing IEMs in your monitors. You also have your bus configuration. You can change the number of groups you'd want or the number of auxes that you want. We then have our network set up. Here we can set up an iPad to work with the SQ by simply plugging in a router to the network port. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the scenes page on the SQ6. Scenes page is found on the button fourth from the right. You can see I have one scene on, coming from my USB drive that I've already uploaded onto this console. Um, if I had other scenes, they'd show up in order. You could see that the show is coming from my USB. Um, as we go down into the other edit screens inside our scenes page, you can see that we have global filters that, you can, that allow you to choose parameters in which you'd like to either affect or not affect what is being saved onto that particular scene. You also have safes, so you can choose channels that you'd like to not affect when you're saving your scene. You, can, you have safes for your inputs, you have safes for your effects, and you have safes for your mix. You simply select them by clicking the safe button on the touchscreen. 
All right, now we're going to talk about our effects on the SQ. On the SQ, we have eight dedicated effects buses, which means you don't have to burn channels in your mixer. You can see on the right of the console, you have the four, you have four dedicated effects sends. If we click the effects button under the touch screen, which is fourth from the left, here you can see our menu that allows for eight effects slots of built-in effects. You can see that those dedicated effects buttons correspond directly with that in the effects screen. And you simply send by choosing the effect that you'd like to send to on the console and by sending your faders to that. Let's say we just want to send our vocals to reverb. You can send your vocals to reverb there. You can see that our effect 3 is the tap delay. You can then select effect send 3 and send the delays. In my layers, I have set up my layer B to be my mix output. So here you can see that I've labeled effects one and two, return one and two, so I can always keep an eye on them. And this feature is great because you have great processing with these built-in effects, as well as not losing any channels. Next screen we're going to look at is our metering screen. You can get to there by pressing the meters button, that's the third button from the left under the touch screen. And here you can see that we have our input meters, our effects meters, our output meters. We have a built-in RTA. And we have Alan Heath's newest feature on this console which is called chromatic metering. Now a great example of this chromatic metering can be seen here on channels 1 and 2 where I have an iPod playing. You can see that every dB is customizable to a certain color. Chromatic metering allows you to associate a certain color with a certain dB level. So I have chosen negative 40 dB to be green and blue negative 20 to be white, zero to be blue, and plus 12 to be red. So that you can see how this works, I'm going to choose the channel that I have audio coming in from, and I'm going to bring the preamp all the way down and slowly go up so you can see the, the, uh, the actual LED change color. So if you look at channel one, I'm currently at minus 20 dB. As I hit zero, I get to the color changes to white. And I get to plus 12. You can see that my pink peak meter turns red. If I go to my meters page, I can change these parameters. So you can see I changed my negative 20 to green. Green turns into white. So on and so forth. That's called chromatic metering. Next we have our routings page. The routings page uh, is accessible by pressing the button that's second from the left under the touch screen. And here we have two main uh, screens. One is our input routing and one is our output routing. You can see as I select an input, that input is highlighted. If I select an output, it switches over to an overview of all of my outputs. Here you have different uh, layers. 
um, we have we have our DCA assigns, we have our meet assigns, our main sends, our mix sends, and our effect sends. So all of these uh, parameters are seen across the board from our inputs to our outputs. You can see what is going where, how much of how much level is going to that particular place, um, and it's just a great way to just be able to see all of your channels and all of your outputs simply by scrolling and viewing the level of audio that is being sent to the individual places. You can also change inputs and outputs over from a pre-fader to post-fader level here in this routing page as well. All right, and looking at the back of the console, you can see that we have 24 local inputs, we have 14 local outputs, and we have three dedicated stereo inputs. Those inputs allow us to not burn channels to bring things like an iPod or a CD player into the console. Uh, we also have a switch, a foot switch output. We have an AES output. And we also have SQ S-Link output. The S-Link allows us to speak to um, other stage boxes such as the AR2412 Digital Snake, as well as DLive D-Snake, such as the DX64. We then have a network port that allows us to connect to a router to connect iPads. And we also have the USB port, which allows for 32 by 32 uh, channels of audio, either recording or being brought into the console at 96K. We also have the I.O. port, which allows for a Dante card or for a Waves card to be brought into the SQ console.